Hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Sophia and it is somehow that time of the month once again where we are going to be choosing up my TBR and it just so happens to be for the month of October. As you may have used some context clues and used your critical thinking skills, you may have gathered that I like to choose my TBR using a TBR jar and I have added a few new prompts in for this month in particular because obviously October we've got to lean into the spooky vibes just a little bit. I'm I'm going to go back to choosing eight books for the month of October for two reasons. Reason number one is because I like having a lot of choice and reason number two is I have a week off in the middle of October from uni so hopefully I'm going to get a lot of reading done but let's jump right into it and choose my first prompt. Let's pick a good one. Oh, I like can't grab one because my fingers are so cold. Okay let's have a look. Where are we? Oh an earth an author, an author whose first or last name starts with S. I feel like we haven't had this prompt in quite a while, so that's quite fun. But what am I going to choose? I feel like I have so much stuff on my shelves now too. It's just like hard to see. We could do Sophie Lark, Kelly Smeltzer. Oh, I've just seen Kat Singleton, and I know that her third book in her like something billionaire series follows a football player and like his assistant or something. Don't take my word for those details. I've only read the blurb like once. Simone St. James, The Book of Cold Cases. Are we going spooky for October or are we going football player? I believe this one follows like a true crime blogger who gets a job as a hotel receptionist at like a haunted hotel or something. This one does sound quite good. What is that? Reader's guide. Discussion questions. Oh, what the hell is this? This is giving English homework. <laughs> One of the questions is, think about how the Greer mansion is described in the novel. What do you think the mansion's construction symbolises? Oh, the novel explores the case of a female serial killer. Why do you think the author chose to write about a serial killer who was a woman? I hope that's not a spoiler. No, <laughs> it's not. It's on the back of the book. Okay. It has a 3.75 average star rating. What are my friends saying? Five star two star four star 4.5 star should i read it this sounds actually interesting i think okay plot twist as soon as i thought about the cat singleton book i thought i was gonna pick it but i think i'm actually gonna put the book of cold cases by simone st james on my tbr i'm quite intrigued by it and i think it should be a quick sort of like not relaxing read but just like a fun book to read on a summer's day so i think i'm gonna put this one well, not a summer's day but a spring's day so i think i'm gonna put this on my tbr and i'm actually quite intrigued to read it all right book number two Oh, that one. Oh, there's two. Oh, I dropped both of them. <laughs> a. Oh, that's fun. Okay, this prompt says a book with a different coloured cover to the spine. This suddenly just got really hard, actually. <laughs> First Down by Grace Riley, but I've not heard fantastic things about this series, so I'm a little bit apprehensive. We could do Wrecked in the Dirty Air series, but I don't really want to continue that series right now. I'm really in the mood for just like, I'm reading Daydream by Hannah Grace at the moment and it's put me back in my like obsession with little college friendship groups. I feel like most books in my collection have the same colour cover as their spine. And I would probably prefer to read this over first down. We could do Butcher and Blackbird. So this is another option. I never realised that all of the books on my shelves just... <gasps> I've just seen such a good candidate. Unsteady by Peyton Corinne. Has a dark blue spine and light blue cover. I have previously tried reading this book and it didn't grasp me. But I didn't keep reading <laughs> I didn't keep reading it, so I don't know if I would like it. The, the the font is big, which is nice. I've heard this one's very good for like mental health representation. Do I give Unsteady by Peyton Corinne another chance? I feel like I do. I sort of want to read Butcher and Blackbird just purely because it's October, but I think I'm going to give Unsteady by Peyton Corinne another chance. This is a hockey college romance, as I said. Sadie, they've both got a lot on their plate, but Sadie sort of becomes... Reese's like I don't want to say emotional support person but his friend who just like helps him work through a lot of uh anxiety and panic attacks oh, but healing doesn't mix with secrets and they're both skating a thin line I'm gonna give unsteady another chance I'm gonna do it I'm gonna put on the TBR book 
Number three. A... <laughs> this prompt says a fantasy romance. If I got this last month, I would have been ecstatic. But I'm not sure that I want to read a fantasy romance at the moment. What are my options? You know what? The Serpent and the Wings of Night has been tempting me a little bit recently. Just a little bit. We could also do... <laughs> I reread if I inked in blood. Don't tempt me. I will do it. Fall of Ruin and Wrath, Powerless, The Bridge Kingdom. I've been strangely tempted by The Serpent and the Wings of the Night recently, so I think I'm going to pick that one up. So here she is, The Serpent and the Wings of Night by Carissa Broadbent. This is a vampire romance. So I believe our main heroine has been sort of like adopted into this powerful family, but she herself doesn't have powers or like anything particularly special about her i think and our hero is a vampire and they both enter this like hunger Games style tournament and i don't know if they team up i don't know if they despise each other i'm not sure but our heroine or raya is desperate to kind of like prove herself i think oh to survive or raya is forced to make an alliance with a mysterious rival there we go he's a ruthless vampire an efficient killer an enemy to her father's crown and her greatest competition. Yet what terrifies Aurea most of all is that she finds herself oddly drawn to him. I think I'm gonna do it. I think I'm gonna do it. How am I gonna commit? It's like 500 pages. You know what, I'm gonna brave the 500 pages and I'm gonna put The Serpent and the Wings of Night on my TBR. Book number four, a book starting with a random letter. I feel like we haven't had a random generator prompt in a little while, so this is fun. But basically for this prompt, I'm gonna pull up a random letter generator on my phone and I'm gonna generate a random letter and then I'm gonna have to find a book on my shelves that starts with that letter. Should we do the spinny wheel? I feel like we should, let's do it. I missed it, there we go. Oh, it's gonna be F. F. F? I feel like it always gives me the strangest letters. We have Forever Wild by K.A. Tucker, but that's the third in a series and I haven't read the second one. So I don't know that we can count that either. We have Flawless by Elf Silver, but I've read that. Or oh, I've seen a book and I don't think I want to read it. <laughs> we have Fair Catch by Candy Steiner. Or oh, we have Fake by Tate James, but it's the third in the series and I haven't read the second one. Story of my life. Falcon's Pray by C. Lamari. I may appear at my Kindle, but I think Fair Catch might have to be the one. <gasps> or, oh, alternatively, <laughs> Aideen, who comments on like every one of my videos, we're really good friends. I chat to her all the time on Instagram. She's so freaking lovely. I literally love her. She recommended a book to me called Face Off by Chelsea Curato. It starts with an F. It's called Face Off. It's on Kindle Unlimited. Let me read the blurb before I commit, okay? 4.24 average star rating. That's good. Emerson Hartwell has waited for a spot on an NHL roster since she became a professional hockey player, and this season, she'll finally get the chance to show showcase her talents with the struggling DC stars. Maverick Miller. Okay, Top Gun, go off. Maverick Miller is the best player in the league, but he's never had a winning record. Team captain and desperate to turn things around, he agrees to play nice with the fiery new left winger, even though they're total opposite. After a night with a tension between them, reaches a tipping point and they fall into bed together. Emmy and Maverick vow it was only one time. Just wants to get it out of their system so they can play better and help their team. It doesn't mean anything. She doesn't date hockey players. He's a notorious playboy who doesn't date, period. Except what should have been once happens again, then again. Again. They tell each other their friends with benefits arrangement is only for the season, but despite facing off on the ice behind closed doors, the pair is nothing but fire. Okay, I'm gonna put Face Off by Chelsea Curato on my October TBR. I've been really enjoying your guys' book suggestions that you leave me in the comments. Someone told me to read The Only One Left by Riley Sager and I'm halfway through it loving it. So I'm going to trust Bestie and I'm going to put Face Off by Chelsea Kuroto on my TBR and I'm really sorry if I'm saying her last name wrong but I'm going to put this book on my TBR and I'm really really excited to read it. All right book number five. Oh I dropped it. <laughs> right a book closest to 300 pages. I had this prompt last month and from what I can remember, I think I chose Mayfly by CJ Lead, and I'm yet to read that book yet. And it's horror, and it's October. Okay, Mayfly by CJ Lead. I think this is the one I chose for this prompt last month because it's 294 pages long, which I feel like is perfect. I sort of want to say Butcher and Blackbird. I feel like it's going to be too long though. Oh, hang on a minute. Oh, oh, do we... 
Oh, the epilogue pushes it to 313, so that's unfortunately too long. I would love to read The Dixon Rule by L. Kennedy, but I know that's gonna be too long. I think I'm gonna call it, and I'm gonna put Mayfly by CJ Lead back on my TBR. This one, since putting it on my TBR last month, I've heard mixed things. I've heard that it's a little bit of a, like, weird take that it's maybe not told the best but I believe this is just like a feminist sort of retelling of American Psycho where we have a heroine instead of a hero and honestly I support women's wrongs so I'm a little bit interested to see where Mayfly goes and if nothing else I was supporting the spooky vibes of October so I'm gonna put Mayfly back on my TBR. Book number six. Oh I've got two. Oh my god. I feel like my TBR jar is making up for having no random prompts last month because this one says a random color generator. So basically this prompt works the exact same as the random letter generator except it's a random color generator instead. So I'm gonna pull up a random color generator. From memory they load as soon as I click on one so let's click on one. Come on. <laughs> Not my slow internet letting me down. Okay. Oh game is yellow. Do I have any yellow books? I have Jasper Vale, but I've read that. And then the closest is Yours Truly by Abby Jimenez. But I, they look a bit similar on camera, but I would absolutely say that's green. So I think we're going to go again and hopefully my internet's a little bit better this time. Maybe we choose the second link instead. Oh, it's like a reddy brown. I don't have anything that color either. Maybe Steel King by Devney Perry. I feel like that's kind of red though. Like that, you look at that cover and that cover's orange. So I'm going to say no. Let's, let's try again. Oh, <gasps> tell me that's not perfect. Look at that. That's like identical. The perfect match. Oh, third time really is the charm. I'm going to choose Collide by Balcabra because you cannot tell me that's not the same color. At this point, you can probably tell that I'm really getting right back into my college hockey romances because this once again is a college hockey romance. But this one, I believe the two of them are like paired together on a project. It's giving very similar vibes to the Maple Hill series by Hannah Grace, which I'm deep in once again, and I have fallen right back in love with it. So I'm eager to check this one out. I am very, very curious because I've heard such good things and everything about this book theoretically should be right up my alley. I've also read a couple of pages of it here and there in my scavenger hunt videos because I think I landed on this book for a prompt in each video but from what I've read which is not much with not much context I think I'm gonna like this one so I'm gonna put Collide by Balcabra on my TBR and you cannot tell me that's not like the cutest cover ever. All right book number seven a book I think will be a five star Okay, no pressure, I guess. What the hell? Oh, it's really bad that I'm struggling with this. I've seen a book and it's Waking Olivia by Elizabeth O'Rourke. And I think the plot of this book has five star potential, but I've tried reading this book and the writing style is not my favorite. So I don't know that she can achieve five star potential just because of that. What else do I have? Theoretically, I should buy books because I think they're gonna be a five star, but what I'm seeing is not serving. So maybe, maybe I'm gonna look on my Kindle. Oh, so <laughs> on my Kindle, I have Quicksilver by Callie Hart. Now, I didn't really like Akita. <laughs> so putting Quicksilver, which I've heard is essentially a copy of Akita or takes a lot of similar themes from Akita, at five star potential feels silly, but I'm really interested in reading it and I feel like it will appeal to my delusions. I Spet by SJ Silvers, maybe. Playing by Her Rules by Amy Andrews. I think I'll love the story to this one because it's rugby, but I don't think I'll love the writing as much. Do we do it? I'm gonna put Quicksilver by Callie Hart on my TBR. What's this one about? No idea. It has a really good average star rating. Holy moly. How is this not traditionally published yet? 4.46 star. That's mad. The blurb says, do not touch the sword. Do not touch the key. Do not open the gate. In the land of the unforgiving desert, there isn't much a girl wouldn't do for a glass of water. 24 year old Cyrus Fane is, is he gonna be 500 years old? Is he gonna be a grandpa? Oh no. Okay. 
Anyway, 24-year-old Cyrus is good at keeping secrets. No one knows about the strange powers she possesses or the fact that she has been picking pockets and stealing from the Undying Queen's reservoirs for as long as she can remember. But a secret is like a knot. Sooner or later, it's bound to come undone. When Cyrus comes face to face with death himself, she inadvertently reopens a gateway between the realms and is transported to a land of ice and snow. The Fae have always been the stuff of myth, of legend, of nightmares, but it turns out they're real. And Cyrus has landed herself right in the middle of a centuries-long conflict that might just get her killed. The first of her kind to tread the frozen mountains of Evelia is over a thousand years. Ceres mistakenly binds herself to Kingfisher. Why is he a bird? A handsome fey warrior who has secrets and nefarious agendas of his own. He will use her alchemist's magic to protect his people no matter what it costs him or her. Be careful of the deals you make, dear child. The devil is in the details. Okay. There's some five stars and there's also some DNFs. Which side am I gonna fall on? Who knows? There's only one way to find out and I would like to find out. So I'm going to put Quicksilver by Kelly Hart on my TBR. Is this going to be to my taste? Could this be really bad? Potentially. But I think it does also have some five star potential. I think I could, with a stroke of luck, rate this five stars. So I'm going to put it on the TBR. It sounds interesting. I'm intrigued. I just hope it lives up to my expectations. All right, book number eight. She's only a little prompt. Oh my god. This prompt says a one word title. We have Unsteady, we have Collide, we have Quicksilver, all on my TBR, all one word titles. I could do Tease by Melanie Harlow. Powerless by Lauren Roberts. Are we doing a fantasy reading vlog this month? <laughs> Enemies by Tijan. Hideaway by Penelope Douglas. I'm gonna look at my Kindle suggested and maybe there'll be a one word that one word title there somewhere. One word titles. We're on Struggle Street right now. None of these books have a one word title and that one- maybe I do Coach by Debbie Perry. I have been uh wanting to read it for a while and I've just sort of forgotten about it. I'm gonna do Coach by Debbie Perry. That was a really roundabout way to decide on that book but it's the one that is like capturing my attention most out of everything so I'm gonna put Coach by Debbie Perry on my TBR. This one is a second chance potential single dad maybe but he's a football coach at a school or a college and she comes to work at this school slash college I can't remember what it is I think it's probably a college but she comes to work and they bump back into each other and they're like oh long time no see so yeah I'm gonna read this one I think their names are Ford and Millie which are very cute names I do like those names so yeah I think I'm gonna put coach on the TBR and there we have my final TBR for the month of October I feel like we have a pretty good spread we have a horror we have a thriller we have some fantasy romances we've also got some college hockey romances probably too many of them to be honest but I can't help it. If you've read any of these books, please comment down below and tell me what you thought about them because I would love to hear all of your thoughts and opinions. And yeah, thank you guys so, so much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe because I would love to have you here. If you want to follow me on Instagram or Goodreads, they are always linked in the description. And yeah, thank you guys so, so much for watching once again and I will hopefully see you in the next one. Bye!